Eber Footwear, unbeatable. Beaver Footwear in the Business Simulation Game, a presentation for MBA 6145, Strategy and Management, under Dr. Valerie Wallingford of Bemidji State University. Beaver Footwear is co-managed by Katie Grindelin at the top, J.C. Bowman next, Eric Etherington, and me, Shane Fierstead at the bottom. The Business Strategy Game is an online business simulation which emulates the real-world character and complexity of the global footwear marketplace. Our MBA cohort was divided into four teams with students acting as co-managers of their respective companies. The simulation began in the 10th year of the global athletic footwear industry, with growth expected. Market share was distributed evenly across all four teams, so each had 25%. Each team made decisions on operational, financial, marketing, and competitive strategy through eight annual cycles. Beaver Footwear used all three available distribution channels throughout the simulation, including wholesale sales, online sales, and private label contracts. The consumer demand for athletic fair footwear is diverse. The largest segment of the market is athletic shoes worn for everyday casual wear but there is a sizable market for specialty shoes. Based on core competencies, each company selected one of four basic strategies, being a low cost provider, a focused approach, differentiation, or being a best cost provider. The following problem statement was developed as at the start of the simulation. The Board of Directors of Beaver Footwear has charged management with developing a strategic direction that capitalizes on continuing consumer interests, keeps Beaver Footwear as an industry leader, and increases the company's earnings year after year. The Board expects a strategy that delivers consistently good results and has set five performance objectives for management. Earnings per share, return on equity, stock price, credit rating, and image rating. However, as new managers of the global footwear company and with a market share equal to competitors, Beaver Footwear has not realized a competitive advantage or differentiated itself. If Beaver Footwear does not formulate an appropriate strategy, the company will be unable to meet shareholder expectations, product image will deteriorate, and market share will decline. To meet shareholder expectations and create a competitive advantage, Beaver Footwear will deploy a strategy that gives customers more quality and value for their money. Beaver Footwear Management performed a SWOT analysis at the end of year 18. Looking internally, management identified the following strengths and weaknesses, beginning with strengths, an exceptional management team with proven experience, strong brand image and celebrity appeal, superior product quality compared to rivals, industry-leading employee training programs, and economies of scale throughout the value chain. Weaknesses identified were expanded global production capacity holds risk for underutilization. The cost of high-quality shoes makes it challenging to compete on price alone. And lack of manufacturing operations in Europe, Africa, increases exposure to fluctuating tariff and exchange rates. Looking externally, the following opportunities and threats were identified. The overall market for athletic footwear continues to grow. Production capacity expansions due to market share growth. Gain market share by evaluating celebrity contracts to ensure maximum appeal in each region. Improve the company's public image rating through increased spending and corporate social responsibility and citizenship and cut delivery times to less than three weeks to gain additional retailers. Threats, potential for competitors to emulate the high quality strategy and obtain a second mover advantage. Tariff and exchange rate fluctuations, increased rivalry due to slowing market growth, and increased competition for celebrity bids. 
Management has created several charts showing the performance of several key financial indicators. Revenues have increased on average 13%. Revenues grew from approximately $239 million in year 10 to approximately $609 million in year 18, an increase of 155%. As previously discussed, as Shane previously discussed, the Board of Directors and shareholders have set performance objectives on five performance indicators. The performance objective for earnings per share was to grow it by 7% annually through year 15 and 5% annually thereafter. The blue horizontal line on the graph represents that expectation. As you can see, Beaver Footwear has exceeded shareholder expectations for earnings per share in all years. Earnings per share grew from $2.50 in year 10 to $11.87 in year 18, a 375% increase. The performance objective for return on equity was to maintain a return of 15% or higher annually. The company has exceeded the 15% tar target each year except for one in which the return on equity was 14.6%. The return on equity ranged from 14.6% to 23.3%. The final year of the game, return on equity was at its highest at 23.3%. The performance objective given for the company and management is to maintain a B plus or higher credit rating. The company's credit rating has been near perfect with an A plus rating for the last five years. The Board of Directors and shareholders expected management to increase the stock price by 7% annually through year 15 and 5% annually thereafter. The company greatly exceeded this target. The stock price rose from $30 in year 10 to $184.61 in year 18, a 515% increase. Investor expectations for image rating was to achieve a 70 or higher. The company's image rating is based on the quality of its shoe, its market share, and cumulative corporate social responsibility actions. The company has exceeded investor expectations in all years with an image rating that ranged from 77 to 86. Beaver Footwear sales consisted of wholesale sales, internet sales, and private label contracts. The company's wholesale units in the red bar have increased each year, averaging 10%. In year 10, wholesale unit sales were 4,274,000 pairs of shoes, compared to year 18 unit sales of 9,342 pairs of shoes, an increase of 118%. Internet sales have increased each year, but at a variable rate ranging from 5% to 71%. The average increase over time was 24%. Year 10 internet unit sales were 226,000 compared to year 18 unit sales of 1,120,000, an increase of 396%. The bar in the green represents private label sales. In years where the company has excess capacity, management would bid on private label contracts. The company has secured contracts in several years. Beaver Footwear's global market share has increased significantly since year 10. In year 10, it was 25%, and in year 18, it was 31.2%. Porter's Five Forces Analysis is a framework that analyzes the level of competition within an industry. The analysis assumes that there are five important forces that determine competitive power in a business situation. Those forces are threats of new entrants, rivalry amongst existing competitors, substitute products, power of buyers, power of suppliers, and that's it. First, threat of new entrants. In BSG, the threat of new entrants is low as no new companies will enter the market. However, there is potential for existing companies to construct new plants in Europe and Latin America. Rivalry amongst existing competitors. The intensity of rivalry is high in the athletic footwear industry. 
each company in the industry is equally balanced and is expected to put forth a strategic effort to capture an increased share of the growing global market. Rivalry will be more intense among competitors that choose a similar strategy. Substitute new products. Beaver Footwear has identified many substitute products within the athletic footwear industry. With substitute products offered at a lower price, there is a risk for consumers who are less brand conscious switching to a competitor's product. This acts as a barrier for the price that Beaver Footwear can charge for its higher quality shoe. Pricing significantly higher than substitutes could lead to a shift in consumer demand, decline in market share, and loss of profits. Power buyers. For power buyers, there are four main competitors that operate in the athletic footwear industry and carry a range of models and styles. The bargaining power of the buyer, both retailer and consumer, is considered high as there are virtually no switching costs. Power of suppliers. Supplier power is moderate. When demand for a particular quality level, superior or standard, is higher, the suppliers have the power to raise their prices at level of industry attractiveness. The overall attractiveness of the industry is moderate to high as, intense, as intensity as three of the five forces, rivalry, substitute products, and buyer power have a combined negative impact, and two forces, threat of new entrants and power of suppliers have low or moderate impact. Now that the five forces analysis is complete, let's discuss Beaver Footwear's strategic vision. The strategic vision of the organization was discussed in great deal, detail throughout the game. Beaver Footwear was continuously referring back to the overall vision of the organization to ensure it aligned with chosen strategies and tactics. Beaver Footwear's strate strategic vision is to be the global leader among high quality, best value footwear for generations. The competitive strategy is the best cost provider by giving customers more value for their money. The company aims to give customers a quality product at a lesser price than competitors. This will involve providing customers with a higher quality shoe at a more cost effective price when compared to similar quality shoes within the market. <clears throat> the vision statement for Beaver Footwear is globally crafted quality footwear with exceptional value. Our current slogan is high quality, affordable footwear for generations. And our tagline is simply unbeatable. The overall strategy of Beaver Footwear was built upon precise, analytical, and data-driven decisions by the management team. This propelled the transformation of the company into a global leader within the athletic footwear industry. Our strategy was built upon the following areas. Branded footwear competitive strategy, private label footwear competitive strategy, production and workforce compensation strategy, and financial strategy. Beaver Footwear also reviewed the following, the closest competitors and short and long-term recommendations. Beaver Footwear's competitive strategy for the branded footwear segment was to give the customer the best value for the money. This strategy was achieved numerous ways. First, a portion of the branded footwear competitive strategy was established through an industry-leading style slash quality or SQ rating, which was on a scale of zero to 10 stars. This strategy was achieved by producing an eight star shoe with a mix of superior and standard materials, enhanced styling and features, and an offering of 200 models of, a, of athletic footwear. As market preference began to shift, the company increased models and decreased to a seven-star shoe to maintain its competitive advantage. Despite having the highest price among competitors, Beaver Footwear had the largest market share, proving consumers are willing to pay a premium price for the higher quality shoe.
The marketing strategy for branded footwear revolved heavily around securing celebrity endorsements, matching the appropriate brand ambassador to the region for maximum image and appeal aided in securing demand in each geographic region. Coupling those celebrity endorsements with an advertising spend allowed for celebrities to enhance the Beaver footwear brand image and drove consumer behavior. Additionally, decisions for branded footwear revolved around annual marketing budget adjustments, mail-in rebate offers, sufficient retailer support, and adequate delivery time to retailers. The private label competitive strategy of Beaver footwear was initially based on pursuing private label bids in all four geographic regions. However, this strategy proved to be not as effective as pursuing bids within certain specific regions. So this strategy shifted mid-simulation in order to allow the, the company to focus on these specific regions due to realized increased profit margins. All decisions made within the private label segment were based on the analysis of private competitor bids. Beaver Footwear's production strategy involved expansion into Latin America early in the simulation to take advantage of projected market growth, reduce the company's exposure to volatile exchange rates or tariffs, and to take advantage of the free trade agreement between North America and Latin America. The selection of equipment upgrades involved the purchasing of assembly line upgrades to reduce reject rates by 50% in all production facilities. The upgrade purchase for North America included um, an upgrade to equipment that would allow worker productivity to increase by 25%. In the Latin America and Asia Pacific facilities, equipment was upgraded in order to boost footwear SQ ratings by one additional star. The competitive advantage gained from this strategy is evident through Beaver Footwear's industry-leading operating and net profit margins. Organization's workforce compensation strategy focused heavily on investing in best practices training programs and increasing employee productivity through a mixture of annual base wage increases and increased incentive pay. Cumulative investment and best practices training programs resulted in material cost savings of $1.66 per pair in North America, $2.04 per pair in Asia Pacific, and $1.96 per pair in Latin America. This strategy provided Beaver Footwear with the most productive workforce in the industry while not incurring the highest total compensation costs in the industry. Beaver Footwear's financial strategy encompassed developing a set of guidelines for the management team to utilize when making decisions about the best use of the company's financial resources. These decisions involved the allocation of excess capital within the company, the use of debt for financing growth, and stockholder distributions. First priority was given to projects targeted at increasing efficiency or the expansion of production capacity. If these projects required additional capital, the organization would secure long-term debt to finance up to 50% of the project, as long as this amount did not negatively affect the company's credit rating. This allowed the organization to maintain an a credit rating throughout the majority of the simulation. If opportunities to increase efficiency or increase production capacity did not exist, the next logical use of capital was reserved for growing the company's brand. This campaign was carried out by increasing marketing budgets or the amount of capital that was allocated towards celebrity contract bids. Additional payments on long-term debt or stockholder distributions were next in line after making necessary adjustments to the company's marketing campaign. 
Eber Footwear's primary choice for stockholder distributions was through stock repurchases. This decision allowed the company to return cash to its shareholders while also generating a larger increase in earnings per share and return on equity and offering a cash dividend for an equal amount. However, this precedence will change over the next two years because Beaver Footwear is expected to approach the maximum threshold for repurchase shares of stock during year 19. This threshold would subsequently shift any remaining free cash for shareholder distribution to a cash dividend. Each of the other three global footwear companies were rivals in their own way. ABC Athletics chose to follow a similar strategy to that of Beaver Footwear by manufacturing a higher quality shoe. Dynamic Footwear chose to, to compete in the low price market and saw decent market growth and performance. Cool Runnings chose to issue an ultra low price for its customers and also manufacture a lower quality footwear and was able to generate comparable market, market growth and financial performance. This qualified them as the closest competitor for Beaver footwear. Toward the end of the simulation, Cool Running secured crucial celebrity endorsements and appeared to be pursuing a strategy similar to Beaver footwear. It's for this reason that Beaver Footwear must monitor not only Cool Runnings, but all three competitors to detect changes in their strategies and react appropriately. Short-term and long-term recommendations. In the short term, Beaver Footwear plans to expand capacity throughout all of its production facilities in order to fulfill forecasted product demand. Plant expansions will elevate the company's economies of scale, further reducing manufacturing costs, and result in savings that can be passed directly to the consumer. These changes further reinforce Beaver Footwear's strategy of offering its customers more value for the money. In addition, the company will continue to monitor competitors' market positions, financial metrics, and strategies in order to seize opportunities for launching an offensive attack. In the long term, the company plans to authorize construction for a plant in Europe, Africa with a production capacity of 2 million shoes in order to reduce its exposure to fluctuating exchange rates and tariff costs. This construction would be financed internally due to forecasted excess capital in the future. As a result of this new construction, idle capacity in the Asia Pacific region will be sold. On completion of construction in Europe, Africa, Beaver Footwear will have a global manufacturing presence, allowing for more control within each ge geographic region. An additional long term initiative for Beaver Footwear should be to develop a corporate social responsibility plan, both globally and regionally. Management should consider the triple bottom line, which includes people and the planet, in addition to profits. Regionally, Beaver Footwear must understand the impact they have on the surrounding communities in the most mutually beneficial way to succeed long term. The organization should continue to push forward with a strategic vision of globally crafted quality footwear with exceptional value. Maintaining this vision, along with operational and financial excellence, will allow the organization to provide high quality footwear for generations. This slide provides projections for um, various financial metrics through the years 19 and 20 as compared to the last year um, 18 of the actual simulation. Revenues, earnings per share, return on equity, stock price, and global market share continue to increase into the, into the future. 
The image rating of the company will increase by a small amount in year 19 and is projected to level off into year 20. The credit rating will remain the same at a value of, of an A plus, even though the company is looking to expand in the near future. Beaver Footwear's management team spent considerable time reading the player's guide and help screens to understand the components of the game, as well as many hours of preparation for each simulation round. Each decision round management discussed theoretical as well as hypothetical scenarios based on best practices and personal experience to learn and grow as a team to understand and evaluate their organization. Throughout the simulation, management spent considerable time analyzing, crafting, and deploying their strategy each round. During the early stages of the simulation, it became apparent to the management team that some form of analysis spreadsheet would be required to help track competitor decisions and to serve as an aid when making decisions about Beaver Footwear's ongoing strategy. The solution was the development of the War Book, a spreadsheet designed for identifying trends and competitors' actions, forecasting industry averages for upcoming decision rounds, and ensuring management's actions would be based on data-driven decisions. <clears throat> An additional benefit of this spreadsheet was its ability to efficiently determine pricing for footwear and establish advertising budgets that would generate the highest return for the company based on forecasted industry average. Another lesson management team of Beaver Footwear was to retain an adequate amount of operating cash within the company to account for any unforeseen events. During one business cycle, an insufficient amount of cash was retained for operations. This resulted in an overdraft of the company's financial accounts and the company was forced to draw from a higher interest line of credit. The overall effect of this mistake on the company for this business cycle included a downgraded credit rating, a decrease in investor expectations, and the burden that was associated with repaying the amount drawn from the higher interest line of credit. Throughout the remainder of the simulation, the management team ensured to retain a sufficient amount of operating cash in order to eliminate the possibility of this event occurring again in the future. Throughout the simulation, it became evident that celebrity appeal boosted sales. Finding the right mix of celebrities along with the appropriate price point was paramount to the company's success. In year 17, Beaver Footwear was outbid and gained no additional celebrities. This oversight shocked the company's brand image, forced higher expectations on advertising, and had a lingering impact throughout the remaining cycles of the simulation. Further, the stock price was negatively affected due to decreased operating profits from the resulting changes that needed to be made to the advertising budget. This taught Beaver Footwear that it may be worthwhile to pay a premium for desirable celebrities. We found the following advice to be valuable from our field representatives during the course of this simulation. Anticipate curveballs, have a plan B to help mitigate risk, anticipate competitors' actions while making decisions, spend time working on the simulation as if it were your own business and you were depending on it for your own livelihood, and keep controlled growth in mind as you make decisions throughout each round. Accomplishments of Beaver Footwear were many. The overall game score of the company was 112 out of 100. This score was based on a combination of investor expectation scores 
and best in industry scores. Beaver Footwear was able to capture and maintain first place throughout each decision round. Beaver Footwear received the Lead Frog Award during the years 13 and 15. This award was presented to companies each round that were able to increase their overall score the most from the previous round. The interesting thing here is Beaver Footwear was able to capture this award in other rounds or in these rounds when other teams actually decreased their overall scores. Beaver Footwear received the Bullseye Award during the years 13 and 17. This award was prevented, presented to companies that were able to have an actual performance on total revenue and EPS that vary no more than 5% of their projected values. Beaver Footwear was the only team to achieve this award and was able to do it twice during the simulation. Beaver Footwear received, received Corporate Social Responsibility Awards for four consecutive years from years 15 to 18 during the simulation. <clears throat> the company was also ranked on BSG's leaderboard for most outstanding corporate citizens. Finally, Beaver Footwear was ranked in the BSG Global Top 100 for three consecutive weeks. For the week of March 7th through the 13th, the team or the company achieved a uh, 69th place overall among 5,224 other companies participating from 243 universities. From March 14th through the 20th, the company achieved a ranking of 28th overall between 4,572 other companies participating from 253 universities. Finally, from March 28th to April 3rd, the company was able to achieve a ranking of 73rd overall amongst 6,292 companies from 320 universities. Thank you for viewing our presentation on Beaver Footwear.